Welcome back to Robot Cantina. It's that time again. Go ahead and pour yourself a large coffee and grab some Captain Crunch. In this episode, your mileage may vary. See Jimbo for details. Oh, and don't forget to mow the lawn. It needs it. Yeah, your neighbor told me to say something. So get it done. We had great success with the supercharged 420cc engine in our street legal go-kart, but we also identified a few issues that need to be addressed before we can continue testing the supercharger. The good news is, the parts are on the way and we'll get back to testing soon. In the meantime, I figured we would do some experiments to answer some common questions that we get on why we do stuff a certain way. Now keep in mind, the videos you see normally don't cover some of the details, but behind the scenes we do a lot of work trying to get this car to go faster. Because as most of you know, our goal is to get to 70 miles per hour with what is effectively a cement mixer engine. And of course, the engine isn't ideal for this quest, but that's part of the fun. I do get a lot of comments on how I'm wasting my time with this engine, and yes, I'm smart enough to know that there's better engines available, but that's the easy way. We want to get to 70 miles per hour the hard way, and the hard way is to get the car to go as fast as possible with mostly go-kart parts. And we spice it up a little bit with some high-tech stuff. I think the majority of the subscribers completely understand this is a ridiculous endeavor and serves virtually no purpose. But, on the other hand, there's a lot to be learned by taking the path least traveled. So today we're going to fool around with the 212cc engine on the Prony Dyno. Now keep in mind, this is not the 420 engine that we're currently using, but it's an engine we used in the past, and we keep it around to do experiments. Actually, this little engine got our street legal go-kart up to 54 miles per hour last season. So it's pretty amazing when you consider it's only 212 cc. But I do have to qualify that claim. We went 54 miles per hour on a straight and level road with no wind to help us or to hurt us. Anyway, let's experiment with different types of fuel and see how much power we can make. Also, we'll test the ACR billet flywheel at full advance, which is 32 degrees before top dead center, and see if too much advance hurts power production. And later, on a different dyno, we'll see how well the ACR flywheel cools the engine when compared to the stock Predator flywheel. So in a previous episode, the 420 engine was fitted with a billet ACR connecting rod and heavier valve springs. But some folks noticed we didn't use the ACR billet flywheel. And yeah, I get cold on this all the time. You see, the cast iron flywheel that comes with the Predator engine is perfectly fine if the RPMs are kept within the design limits. Once you exceed 5,000 RPM, well, the flywheel can explode, and yeah, that happens. So this is a 212cc flywheel, and not the 420 flywheel, but they're pretty much the same as far as construction. Anyway, you can see it's made of cast iron and looks a bit crude. However, normally you can expect these flywheels to outlast the engine if you keep the RPMs down to a reasonable level. This flywheel uses a cheapo-looking nylon cooling fan to keep manufacturing costs low. Overall, the fan appears to be quite aggressive and may actually provide too much cooling depending on the application. Anyway, this cast iron slug weighs in at 5 pounds 12 ounces with the cooling fan, so it's fairly heavy to boot. Fortunately, there is a flywheel that's better suited for higher RPMs, and that's the ARC billet flywheel with an integral cooling fan. Everything about this flywheel is on point, all the corners are radius to prevent stress risers, and the magnets are pinned to prevent catastrophic damage. This gem weighs in at 3 pounds 7 ounces, and that's quite a bit less than the stock cast iron flywheel. Overall, this is the best flywheel you can use on a Predator engine. Now keep in mind, ARC is not a sponsor of this channel, but I like to say good things about them because they build outstanding products. But Jimbo, why don't you use an ARC flywheel? Well, we did when we built the 212cc engine that got us up to 54 miles an hour back in Season 1. The problem with these flywheels is, they're for high revving engines, and not necessarily an engine that's under constant load for extended periods of time. So yeah, they're awesome, but at the same time they're no good if you run the engine hard at full power for a long time. These flywheels are intended for lightweight go-karts or minibikes, and you can expect trouble-free performance, but for our application they don't provide enough cooling, and we'll demonstrate that later in the video. So let's do some experiments with the dyno. Now today we're going to play around with different fuels, and the first one we're going to test is 87 octane E10. But is it really E10? Let's find out. So in the beaker, we have exactly 100 milliliters of 87 octane, and in this beaker, we have exactly 20 milliliters of distilled water. Let's mix them and see what happens. 
So this little trick will separate the ethanol from the gasoline and the ethanol will combine with the water. Right away you can see the separation, but it takes about 24 hours to get full separation. So fast forward one day and we have full separation. We added 20 milliliters of water and now we're showing 26 milliliters at the separation barrier. So that means this E10, which is supposed to be 10% ethanol, is actually 6% ethanol. Now I sampled a bunch of gas stations and found that 87 octane in this area ranges from 2 to 6%. Now I'm not going to get into the politics, but evidently they're cutting back on the ethanol blend lately. Anyway, let's see how the 87 octane performs on the Prony Dyno. For all the new viewers, we're using a Prony Dyno and we'll be experimenting with a modified 212cc engine. This engine typically makes between 12 to 13 horsepower. I actually forgot, but if you're interested, we did a full video on the engine and how the Prony Dyno was constructed a few episodes ago. Check it out. So for this test, we're running 87 octane with the cast iron flywheel. We're also using a six degree offset key. This offset key adds an additional six degrees of advance to the ignition timing. Now for the explosion hazard, I operate the dyno from behind a flash shield. In case you're wondering, we always do at least six dyno runs to confirm the data. The little engine did quite well and pumped out 13.68 horsepower at 6200 RPM and made 15.13 pounds feet of torque at 3120 RPM. It did this on theoretically the worst fuel available. I wonder how it will do with the 91 octane. Of course you know the drill. We mix the sample and check out how much ethanol is in the fuel. Looks like we're at 6% again. So let's test the 91 octane with 6% ethanol. Well, shucks, looks like we lost some power and only managed 13.37 horsepower at 61.16 RPM. And over on the other side, we made 14.61 pounds feet of torque at 33.11 RPM. Now, this is within the margin of error, or possibly the simple industrial engine can't take advantage of the higher octane. This one's too close to call. Now I'm excited to test the 93 octane. Pay attention this time, we make a discovery. Blah, 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 mix the liquids and presto. Whoops, looks like we have a problem. So this 93 octane is actually laced with 22% ethanol. Now that kind of makes sense because ethanol is an octane booster and the turbo guys love the ethanol. But how will the little 212 cc engine handle it? Let's find out. So right away the engine runs different. The idle's higher. Hmm, this is getting interesting. All right, well, let's do it. Well, this is no surprise. The 93 octane with 22% ethanol was the worst of the bunch. There's a host of technical stuff that I'm not going to get into, but the bottom line is the lawnmower engine can't utilize any of the benefits from the ethanol. A lot of serious car guys probably already knew that. For the bottom feeder type engines used in minibikes and go-karts, the best fuel is going to be 87 octane. So to answer why we run 87 octane in our street legal go-kart, well, there's your answer. All joking aside, I wonder if the ethanol laced 93 octane would help our 420cc cement mixer engine now that we have the supercharger. Of course, our EFI is fully programmable and we can modify the mixture as well as the ignition timing. Should I try this stuff next time we do some road tests? Let me know in the comments. The next few tests, we're going to swap in the ARC billet flywheel. This flywheel has a built-in ignition advance of 32 degrees before top dead center, and my instincts are telling me that's way too much advance. But just for giggles, let's see what kind of mayhem we can generate. Oh, and some of you folks may wonder how we change out the fuel on this rig. Well, we pull the little fuel tank and dump the gasoline back in the storage container. Then we open up the float chamber on the carburetor and let it drain. 
Next, we add the fuel we want to test, and then we turn on the electric fuel pump. This little pump will push the new fuel through the system, and eventually it'll drain through the open float chamber. Once the system's flush, we close the float chamber and the dyno's ready to run. So the 87 octane with the ARC flywheel at a ridiculous 32 degrees advance netted us 12.67 horsepower at 64.17 RPM and 12.21 pounds-feet of torque at 31.96 RPM. Keep in mind we're running a stupid amount of ignition advance and it shows in the lower numbers. The stock ignition timing on one of these engines is 21 to 22 degrees before top dead center and a 6 degree offset key can bump the timing up to around 28 degrees. And that's exactly how the cast iron flywheel was set up. Now with the ARC flywheel, we could have used the offset keyway backwards to bring the timing back to a more reasonable number. So don't hate on the flywheel. It's just doing stupid stuff because we wanted to see what happens. Anyway, had we dialed the flywheel in correctly, we would have gotten great horsepower numbers like before. But I don't think the flywheel would have boosted the numbers at all. One more thing to consider is, the 32 degree advance might make sense on a high revving engine that only sees a light load, but on a dyno where we clamp down hard on the engine, this crazy amount of advance quickly becomes a liability. It all depends on how the engine's used, really. So next up is 91 octane, and guess what? Yep, once again we lost some power. Looks like we managed 12.29 horsepower at 52.89 RPM, and 13.45 torques at 38.29 RPM. Well, I reckon the 93 octane with 22% ethanol is next. Let's see how it did. Okay, so we actually picked up some horsepower, but don't get confused. The 93 octane did better with the ridiculous 32 degrees ignition timing, but overall it did worse than the basic 87 octane with a more reasonable ignition timing. So we managed to squeeze out 12.73 horsepower at 6403 RPM and 12.76 torques at 3249 RPM. So the little engine seems to tolerate the 93 octane slightly better when we throw a stupid amount of advance at it. This timing experiment was just for fun. The street legal go-kart has EFI and the ignition timing is programmed to vary depending on the load and other factors. But it may help folks set up their traditional go-karts or minibike engines for the best performance. Okay, so now let's see how the ARC flywheel compares with the stock Predator flywheel when the engine's put under a medium load for an extended period of time. So this is one of our engine test stands, and it's mostly used to tune carburetors. It has a more or less stock 212cc Predator engine that's connected to a 140 amp GM alternator. Today we're going to run the engine at 3000 RPM and apply a 100 amp load. Now that works out to be about a 3 horsepower load when you factor in the efficiency of the alternator. So it's a decent load and the engine will struggle a little bit, but it should keep up. So the first test will be with the stock Predator flywheel and fan, and the second test will be with the ARC flywheel. We'll monitor the cylinder head temperatures during the test and see what happens. So the first switch turns on the alternator. The second switch turns on the cooling fans for the resistor load. Now each one of these switches adds a 20 amp load to the engine. And you can hear it struggle as I add the loads. Okay, so now that we have the engine loaded, I need to adjust the RPM to exactly 3000. It's a bit touchy, but once adjusted, the governor will hold the engine at the desired speed. So it's been 20 minutes, and that's as hot as the engine will get. A quick changeover, so the stock flywheel was set up with a 6 degree offset key to make a total of 28 degrees total ignition advance. Now we're going to put the key back in, but this time backwards, and that'll make the ignition advance 26 degrees, and that'll be close enough. Let's see what happens.
So as you can see from the cylinder head temps, the ARC flywheel isn't as efficient for cooling the engine. Now we did a simple test on the bench, but back in season one when we tried the ARC flywheel in the street legal go-kart, the cylinder head temp got well over 300 degrees and only a few miles. And the thing is, I was fine with that. But when the engine started to diesel or detonate, that's when I got alarmed. So as far as using the ARC flywheel in the street legal go-kart, we tried our best to get the flywheel to work with the 212cc engine, but let's be reasonable. Our street legal go-kart weighs between 1,300 and 1,400 pounds, plus the driver. And when you run the little engine wide open trying to push the car past the 50 mile per hour goal, the billet flywheel just can't keep the engine cool. So to answer the question why we don't use an ARC billet flywheel on a 420 engine, well, it's all about cooling, otherwise we would certainly use one. Until next time.